my review of the Andronic RG350P and the Pow Kitty V90, I noted that the V90 software left something to be desired. It was functional, but not well organized, and the installed emulators were not very customizable. I've since found a custom firmware that significantly improves the experience. The firmware is called MiU and was easy to find with a quick Google search. The firmware supports various BitBoy and Pow Kitty handhelds with clear instructions for each. Installation was simple. I followed the instructions to install on a new SD card and then copied my ROMs over. I attempted to use Apple Pie Baker on my Mac, but ultimately had to shift to Partition Wizard on Windows to expand the main partition. Upon boot, you're greeted with an adorable Pow Kitty logo, an homage to the original Game Boy. The new firmware contains a nice UI broken into several categories, which are navigated with the shoulder buttons. Items inside are navigated with the D-pad. It continues to offer a set of somewhat useless internal applications, which now include a terminal and a calculator. The custom firmware includes more emulators than the stock installation, 29 to be exact. This is far more emulators than the ROMs included on the original SD card can run in. Some of these include DOSBox, Pokemon Mini, Vectrex, Game & Watch, Pico 8, and even Java J2ME Mobile. These additional emulators expand the capabilities of this little device quite a bit. Like the stock firmware, it includes numerous open source Linux games, but the variety is much larger at over 40 games. These include two versions of Doom, Quake, Quake 2, Hexen, as well as a variety of platformers and puzzle games. Enough games are included with the firmware to keep busy for hours. Let's talk about the emulated games. My biggest criticism of the stock firmware is the lack of customizability, for the Game Boy in particular. The MiU firmware addresses that problem with a much more configurable set of emulators that includes a variety of scaling, coloring, and bordering options. They can even simulate the ghosting behavior from original hardware. To demonstrate, let's compare the original firmware and the custom firmware. On the left, we have original firmware, and on the right, we have MiU custom firmware. The original firmware only offered black and white for original Game Boy games. That's it. The MiU firmware offers enough options to simulate the green screen with LCD ghosting, just like the original. It may not look wonderful in green with all that ghosting, but it gives that instant shot of nostalgia. With a few quick tweaks, it can even simulate the Virtual Boy. Game Boy Color games were similarly limited on original firmware, with virtually no customization available. No such issue with the MiU firmware, which offers a bunch of different options to show the boot logo, replicate the non-backlit color rendition of the Game Boy Color, or even replicate the original Game Boy or Game Boy Pocket. To see this in action, we're looking at the new firmware's rendition of a non-backlit Game Boy Color on the left versus the original firmware's uncustomizable rendition on the right. The non-backlit rendition may look a little dull, but it's trying to better represent what the Game Boy Color games actually look like under good light. It's just an option and can be turned off at any time. The original firmware only provides one fully saturated view with no option to try to capture the look of original hardware. Overall, it's a pretty nice upgrade. It's easy to install, provides a better user interface, supports more emulators, and provides more options. It makes this $40 handheld even more of a bargain.